In this presentation, we're going to be talking about Francis and the gospel in a very concrete way. We know that Francis speaks about the revelation that he received from the Most High, from God, that he should live according to the pattern or the form of the Holy Gospel. But what did that mean concretely? We're going to explore what it means to hear the gospel and to read the gospel in Assisi in the 13th century. This will include some attention to the, the physical objects that were available to Francis, those handwritten manuscripts that passed the gospel tradition from generation to generation into our own day. We must remember that in the 13th century, there were no printed books. A handwritten manuscript was a precious commodity written out by a professional scribe on pieces of parchment, lambskin, or vellum, veal skin, the skin of a young calf, carefully prepared with inks that were also made by hand. Illuminated manuscripts were collected by art collectors in the 19th century. And as we will see, one of those collectors in the United States probably brought a little piece of the history of Assisi and perhaps a little piece of the life of Francis to American shores, uh, probably without his knowledge of the importance of what he had. But aside from the physical objects, we also need to ask the question, what was the impact on Francis? And this is before he had any brothers, any followers, when he was quite alone in the first two or three years of his time of conversion in his early 20s. Where did he hear the words of the gospel? And that leads us down to the valley below the city of Assisi, to the little church of St. Mary of the Angels of the Port Siuncula, very close to the leper hospice dedicated to San Rufino, the patron of Assisi. And it may be as this very frightening disease spread in Assisi, especially brought back from people who had gone on the Crusades in Egypt and throughout the Middle East, that because of the presence of the lepers at that hospice, gradually the area was depopulated and the little church and the ancient little chapel of St. Mary of the Angels was abandoned. It was in ruin and Francis as part of his dedication to the work of the church in the early years of his conversion, rebuilds it with his own hands. And there one day, it must have been a special day, mass was actually celebrate, celebrated by a priest in that little chapel. And there Francis hears the word of the gospel. But he also opens the book of the gospel himself. And this comes a few years later. That is when his first followers come to him and ask, how can we live together as a group of brothers? What is it that the Lord is asking of us? And Francis's reply is, let us go and ask the Lord for counsel. The way to do that in the Middle Ages, one of the ways, was simply by praying and then with a great deal of faith to open the scriptures and simply look at what your eyes fell upon, saying whatever that is, we will take it as a message from the Lord. This Francis does with his early companions and he does it with the book of gospels. In the following PowerPoint presentation, you'll have an, an opportunity to look at some of these physical objects, to see the places uh, where they were used during the lifetime of Francis. And even though these are interesting for their architecture or even for their art, the important thing to remember is this is a story of personal change. And it's a change toward a new form of life that attracts others and once that happens, 
the Franciscan movement begins, continuing until our own day. Welcome to this presentation on Francis, the gospel as rule of life. We will be looking at gospel texts that Francis knew and used. If we read the Testament of Francis, we hear how Francis remembers the beginnings of his life of conversion. After the Lord gave me some brothers, no one showed me what I had to do, but the Most High himself revealed to me that I should live according to the pattern of the Holy Gospel. And I had this written down simply and in a few words, and the Lord Pope confirmed it for me. In these few words, Francis tells us about the pattern. The Latin word here is forma, also meaning form, outline, pattern, or design. How he was to live according to the outline or the pattern that is traced in the gospel of the four gospels of the New Testament. For him, the Holy Gospel is one and it's recounted by four evangelists. That will be the revelation that he receives about the way that he is to live. In the legend of the three companions, we hear reminiscences from brothers Angelo, Rufino, Leo, and perhaps others, some 15 years after the death of Francis, where the example of Brother Bernard, Bernard of Quintavale, is given special importance. And here, the story is about how Bernard comes to join Francis after observing his way of life. He asks Francis how he should live. Francis does not have a ready answer for him, as he hadn't planned on having a community. The legend of the three companions tells how he seeks instruction. The saint said to Bernard, we will go to the church early in the morning and through the book of the gospel, we will learn how the Lord instructed his disciples. Rising at daybreak then, together with another man named Peter, who also wanted to become a brother. They went to the church of San Nicolo, next to the piazza of the city of Assisi. They entered for prayer, but because they were simple, they did not know how to find the passage in the gospel about renunciation. They prayed devoutly that the Lord would show them his will on opening the book for the first time. Here we see the former church of San Nicolo in Assisi. On the left, with its own little roof above a small altar, we see what remains of that little chapel. The building behind it is now used as the post office for the city of Assisi. But we must imagine here a church that faced on the central square. It was the church for the patron saint of merchants who did their business there, St. Nicholas. The young Francis would have known this area well as his family home was not very far away. In this church then, they open the book of the gospel. Once they had finished prayer, Blessed Francis took the closed book and kneeling before the altar opened it. At its first opening, the Lord's counsel confronted them. If you wish to be perfect, go sell everything you possess and give to the poor and you will have a treasure in heaven. 
Thus, St. Francis was overjoyed when he read this passage and thanked God. But since he was a true worshiper of the Trinity, he desired it to be confirmed by a threefold affirmation. He opened the book a second and a third time. When he opened it up the second time, he saw, take nothing for your journey. And at the third opening, if any man wishes to come after me, he must deny himself. Each time he opened the book, Blessed Francis thanked God for confirming his plan and the desire he had conceived earlier. After the third divine confirmation was pointed out and explained, he said to those men, Bernard and Peter, brothers, this is our life and rule and that of all who will want to join our company. Go therefore, and fulfill what you have heard. We might be surprised to find an American art gallery featured in this next slide. This is the facade of the Walters Art Gallery in Baltimore, Maryland. Founded by Mr. Walters in the 19th century, a very wealthy an influential American businessman. Mr. Walters also had a great passion for collecting art. Among other pieces of art, he collected beautifully illuminated medieval manuscripts. Though not a particularly religious man, he was a great connoisseur of fine art and left his collection to the people of Baltimore in this gallery open to the public. There, strangely enough, we find a missal from a church of San Nicolo, located in the Diocese of Assisi, a book that was written with gospel readings for Sundays and feast days in the 13th century. At the time in the Diocese of Assisi, there were only two churches dedicated to St. Nicholas. One was a poor rural church far away from the town. The other was the prosperous church of the merchants on the city square. And we believe that this handsome manuscript book of gospel readings comes from the church in Assisi and therefore might likely be the very gospel book that Francis opened with his companions, Bernard and Peter. We see why Mr. Alt Walters might have been interested in it. It has beautifully illuminated pages throughout. The text of the gospel is written in a beautiful hand and many of the capital letters are illuminated with various images and beautiful colors. Here we have the beginning of the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the word. The writing is clear and even though there are many abbreviations, someone trained in reading medieval Latin would have little difficulty in reading this text. Here we have the beginning of the Gospel of Luke. There was in the days of Herod king of Judea, a priest named Zechariah. There on the left, we have a beautiful capital F beginning that chapter at the beginning of Luke's gospel. And the text continues again in a very even hand, beautifully clear margins. This was an expensive book, probably from a very wealthy church. And here we have Matthew chapter 18. The disciples asked Jesus, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And there we have an image at the beginning of what is supposed to be, I suppose, a young child's face. 
If we look at the writings of Francis, the three gospel texts that are given in the legend of the three companions, taken from that gospel book in the church of St. Nicholas, we see that each of them finds its place in the earlier rule, chapter one, verse two, the passage from Matthew 19, if you wish to be perfect, go sell everything you have and give it to the poor. You will have treasure in heaven and come follow me. It's followed by Matthew 16. If anyone wishes to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And the third, if anyone wishes to come to me and does not hate father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Those three early texts first read in the church of St. Nicholas are enshrined, we might say, in the very first chapter of the earlier rule. But in that rule, there's also a fourth gospel text. From Matthew 19, this is the reply of Jesus to Peter's question, Lord, what about us who've left everything to follow you? What's in it for us? And the promise of Jesus, everyone who has left father or mother, brothers or sisters, wife or children, houses or lands because of me will receive a hundredfold and will possess eternal life. Since this fourth text is not mentioned in the story about Francis with Bernard and Peter, we're led to believe that that story is authentic because if an author merely wanted to take the gospel phrases from the first chapter of the rule and tell a likely story about them 15 years later, the author certainly would have given four gospel quotations in the St. Nicholas gospel book. And in fact, there are only three, meaning that this text was probably added at a later stage in the development of the earlier rule, which stretched over a period of many years. Yet we know that as Francis met with Bernard and Peter, he had already been living according to his understanding of a gospel way of life for a couple of years. And that comes from his personal experience before the Lord gave him brothers, hearing the gospel and believing that it was addressed to him. Here, the young Francis, still dressed as a hermit, hears the gospel being read at the church of the Portsiuncula. One day, the gospel was being read in that church about how the Lord sent out his disciples to preach. He heard that Christ's disciples should not possess gold or silver or money or carry on their journey a wallet or a sack, nor bread, nor a staff nor to have shoes, nor two tunics, but that they should preach the kingdom of God and penance. The holy man, Francis, immediately exulted in the spirit of God. This is what I want, he said. This is what I seek. This is what I desire with all my heart. The holy father overflowing with joy hastened to implement the words of salvation. These are the words of Thomas of Chilano, who wrote the first life of Francis, one Chilano. In the years immediately after the death of the saint, in preparation for his canonization, just two years after he died. Remembering that Francis had already adopted the teaching of the gospel as a guide to his life 
before the Lord gave him brothers and before the experience, what he calls the revelation of the gospel given to him and his brothers at the church of St. Nicholas. Francis hears the gospel at the Port Siuncula, and this is the beginning of what will become one of the great innovations in Christian community life, the form of life according to the Holy Gospel.